welcome to another day at LS Nasty headquarters in beautiful North Carolina where it is a brisk 105 degrees. <laughs> what are we working on today? Slick Rick. Got some bars cut. Been notching. Worked a little bit last night. Um, here's these bars for this. Kind of goes in there like that. Uh, the motor plate uh, comes in here and we're going to have another motor plate. Um, laser cut that comes out and it's going to mount here we're going to drill a hole in this tube and uh, sleeve it so the motor plate will bolt here i don't want to weld tabs on the outside of this just because it's already kind of tight and if you start adding shit here then when you're pulling the motor in and out chance you might snag it bend it you don't want to do none of that so if it's in the tube we can just zip the motor plate off of it take it out of the way and it's out of the way um this side a whole nother story yeah same deal we got a lot going on over here so the, um, Explain to them why why you say we have a lot going on over here. Uh, we have the oil pump. This is the oil pump on a 481X or Hemi style. Uh, these are the outlets and the inlets going to the filter. And then you have right here a little pressure port. We're going to block this off because it's kind of close to the steering shaft. And we're just going to um, we're going to mount a clear view on it. And we're going to go off the clear view for our turbo feed and oil pressure. Um, so here's this. I can't it, the the bars can't be symmetrical on this. So we're just going to come here behind the oil pump and that knocks in there, I'm gonna do some grinding on that tube, get some of this old um, tubes off of there. Uh, but I wanna make it to where it's serviceable, to where you can get the oil pump off of it if we need to. I doubt we'll need to take it off. If, if we run into an issue, it's probably gonna be something in the motor, not the actual pump itself, but still don't wanna, you know, we're building it. You know, we put the stuff where we want, we don't wanna block it in there with some tubes and then you have to pull the motor out to pull the oil pump off. So I got that, kinda of mocked up the steering shaft, I drilled a hole in the firewall. We use the uh, wear machine plate that goes in there. It's a five or a three quarter inch bore. So that, that'll bolt right there. Steering shaft goes through. On the inside, probably gonna have to do some joints with another uh, brace for that because here's where, at the angle, here's where the steering wheel would go. So I don't know, unless John, John wants to be like leaning out, hanging his arm out the window, steering it. I don't think it's- Oh, that's work. the angle, huh? Yeah, so we'll cut it off right here at the firewall, put another joint, and then probably have to come off of uh, the brake mount or something with a uh, to get to get it going in the right direction. Yeah, joint to uh, to get it going there. So we're gonna put some apex joints in there. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, these are called an apex joint. So a little bit different than a claiming river joint. You yeah, U joint um, style. So these these have uh, about 30 degrees of bend, uh, high temperature, and uh, they're very smooth. So uh, these are good joints. They're about a hundred dollars a piece though. So they're a little bit more expensive than the regular U joints. So we're gonna do that. We've got some material for the brake master cylinder. Ooh, talking about the brake master cylinder. Why we're going from the previous one to this one? Yep. So the before they were running a single wheel wood, and now we're gonna go to a dual wheel wood. So we have two master cylinders. A little bit more brake volume, uh, master cylinder volume. Uh, if you could fit this in there, or they did it a little bit different, where you had a dual outlet master, that would probably be okay. But with a single outlet master. They had a couple. They had two proportion of valves on the car, and they said the brakes weren't that great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be running two master cylinders, slightly more weight, but it's okay. Um, we're going to be mounting those, and then this will go to the uh, front or rear brake. They're both same bore, and then you have this balance bar right here, so you can adjust your brake bias via this balance bar. So if you want more rear brake bias or more front bias, you can do it all off the balance bar. So we're going to the footprint's a little bit different. We're going to get a plate drill the holes and then hold it up in there and I'll weld it to the existing mount. So other than that, we're gonna get the steering column in hopefully today. We're so as far as the motor placement, that's all good. We're waiting, uh, we got all the measurements, we're waiting to get everything cut to then. Yep, I, I drew it up in Fusion. Um, we can walk through there and we can show that. Uh, we measured for a drive shaft. Uh, I'm about to do the transmission mount. So the transmission, the it's extended back a little bit farther because the lockup bell is an inch and three eighths longer than the regular bell so the transmission is going to come like that i'll put a piece of tube that comes off of it here cut this on angle and then weld a piece of 3 16 flat metal across there bolt straight to it so it won't have any spacers or shims or anything got some fans driving by people blowing their all cars. day yeah it's crazy so get that mounted up there uh that'll get the transmission mounted mid place done uh motor plate stuff will be cut that'll bolt in and the drivetrain's mounted so i feel like we're Rock and roll. Making some progress. I look like hell. What else is new? Um, don't worry, I'm getting my hair cut tomorrow. So I'll... Oh, it's going to be an LS Nasty haircut. LS Nasty haircut day, except for Logan. He will not cut his hair. He just won't do it. Um, 
But besides the haircut, we have some some exciting news because we've been uh, work, there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes, like not actually physically working on the car, but just planning, coordinating, ordering parts, uh, making sure you're getting the right parts. Like takes a lot of time. It's pretty time consuming. Uh, we are really it's our first time dealing with a turbo of this size. Generally. All the other stuff, whether it's a 118 or a GT55 turbo or a large frame precision, like they're all pretty much the same. You build the turbo kit, use three inch hot side, it's good to go. Get a flange, whether it's a, uh, I, I, me personally, I've been liking the streetcar fabrication, Donnie streetcar fab, his flanges are killer. This turbo, it's a Hartz 140, so this is all new to us. So T7 flange, T7 they don't make flange, it. they don't make it. He drew it up, uh, TK Performance is cutting it for us. The hot side, instead of being the three inch, which is like, no brainer we just go and get some three inch from wherever uh, now it's three and a half inch and we're gonna use different thickness so uh we were on the phone with um stainless bros and uh tycon industries and we had a great conversation with them and we we're going to be working with them for all of our material for really our hot side they got double slips they got three and a half you, you know matt knows more of the the numbers and what exactly we need so you can take it away and tell them exactly what we're doing yep so they, they have a, some different material so normally what we'd be using is a 304 uh tube it's like 16 gauge 063 uh on this car and the other hot sides i do i like to use 321 uh 321 is a better grade of stainless it's uh it has a lot less resi uh, resistance to heat corrosion cracking so uh, 304 can have some heat corrosion cracking issues when it's uh, heating and expanding, especially on a hot side. Turbo car makes a ton of exhaust gas temperature through the hot side. 321 is a better material for that. Um, you weld it with a uh, ER347 filler, so it's not like a 304 filler. You can weld it to 304 as well, so if you have like a 304 V-band flange, you can weld it to it, it's fine. But if you're doing it, a little bit more money. The 321 will last longer. It'll be more durable and more reliable. Um, you won't have to worry about any kind of issues. And we're also going to do a double slip joint. So we're not going to do a bellow or anything. Some of these other cars are welded solid. And, you know, when you, if anybody's ever made a hot side, you know, after it heat cycles a few times, the you can't get the V-bands to line up. And it's really hard getting it on and off. With a, a double slip, it allows the hot side to have some slip. But it's not a bellow, so it can't break or blow apart. So it's actually like a tube inside another tube inside another tube and it slips in there and uh when the when the car is cold when the exhaust is cold you might have a little bit of uh leakage right there but as soon as that thing gets any kind of exhaust gas temperature in there like it idles for 10 seconds that thing will seal up be tight um it'll hold plenty of pressure in there so no kind of issues with exhaust back pressure pressure uh, but allow for some expansion because you don't want any of that rigid because that's whenever you can get cracking issues so, so stainless bros i mean i've used tycon industries before I have you stainless bros i was looking at it. it looks like really great quality material uh i think pretty sure it's polished inside and out um so i think uh we're gonna be really happy with the material i'm, I'm really excited to see how it welds uh, there are links in the description below yep so yep. you guys can go over there if you guys are needing any materials to make turbo kits for your own project at home we're gonna refer you over to those guys uh when they got a bunch of different stuff so go over to the website check it out um i'd say probably anything you need to do turbo kit wise yeah flanges they don't offer any um any aluminum bins yet uh, i don't know if they're planning on it but you know there's a ton of other people that you can use for aluminum bins but as far as the hot side stuff hot side stuff exhaust stuff titanium if you want to do that i mean they check them out prices are good um you know they i was really really happy with the prices you see some of the stuff sometimes you, you see some of the bins and they vary a lot you know you know sometimes 40 50 dollars and when you got four or five bins six bins i mean you can have a lot of money in a hot side um so and they do they offer bins with legs so you'll have a couple different kinds you'll have bins with legs bins with no legs and then you'll have loose radius and tight radius so it's like 1d and 1.5d is the radius but you know if you got something you want a little bit longer sweeping bend then you can use a loose radius if you got it like hey we're going to come out like this hot side is going to come right through here that would probably be a tight radius bend or it could be a loose radius bend so you can kind of see and change your radiuses to get where you want so um yeah check them out their links always going to be in the description below when we get really doing all the fabrication stuff on this you'll hear us talk about them more but uh big shout out to all the guys over there and uh, excited to be working with them yep we're gonna do some grinding um like i said the, the steering shaft i thought we we're gonna put two joints down here in the bottom like anybody that's ever done a car like this you know there's the steering shaft you'll have multiple joints you'll have um like this was one of the ones i had the three-quarter tube goes through there and it, it braces it because if you have too many joints when you steer it the things wanting to wobble and the joints wanting to move and you don't want any of that you want the steering to be very precise and controlled and also if there's a, a heavy load there's no deflection in the steering shaft so we're going to get all this worked out 
get the steering column done and uh, just keep rolling with it so I think pretty much once we uh, once we get the motor plate done and the steering column done it'll be turbo kit fabrication wiring yeah we're just waiting on the turbo waiting on the flange and um, obviously a lot of little things cleaning up making it nice but um, you wanna, not not too terrible you want to show them the flange like yeah we can go over there and show them the yeah. flange but before we go anywhere look at Matt we got Matt and Timmy both team bad apple oh, I mean look at this look at this uh, honestly I couldn't greatness. even tell you guys apart like if you if, if you guys weren't if you guys were wearing the same hats I, I wouldn't know the difference I, I'm taller when I lay down though yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so um anybody at home that is into any kind of CAD cam or would like to get into CAD cam, I would suggest this is a Fusion 360. It for the hobbyist, it's free, um, so it's it's a very powerful software, especially for a free software. Um, you can do all this. You can go in and um, write tool pass for it. You can, if you got doing flat flanges, you can save it as a DXF file and send it to a laser cutter, or plasma cutter, or water jet. Um, you can do. I do. I have so much stuff that I've been designing um, in this, and I do all my 3D printing stuff. So, like, I actually. 3d printed this turbo flange that we're making for slick rick so we could mock it up before we send it to the five axis because you know i can 3d print this in about seven hours um you know setting it up on the five axis you could have some serious problems with setting it up if it was you know if it didn't fit so you can always check it with a 3d printer i think for any race shop and uh, they're doing this a 3d printer is an invaluable tool so this is it um it's a t7 flange it's a very odd flange so we got some threaded holes here. Um, this is going. This flange is going to be orientated in this position. So one exhaust is going to come into here, and the other exhaust is going to be facing toward the car, and so it'll kind of loop back. Um, I feel like this is a better option. They do offer one flange, but it's two four inch. It's just straight out, and I feel like this is going to be a little bit more easier to um, package. And the fact that you know you're going into a three and a half inch rectangle so you don't need a four inch crossover it's just not you know your exhaust volume you know it's having to go through here so um, I always want to size it to the smallest size because uh, you want to keep your exhaust velocity up so the larger pipe you run or tubing run the lower your exhaust velocity is so it can kind of hurt spool um, this is it you can do like a uh, cross-sectional analysis this is it of the car we did a um, CFD analysis make sure the airflow and everything's good so it's got a little step register that the tubing will set in there easy to weld threaded holes and everything so that's infusion um, we've done a few other um, parts so yep we got motor like, plates in here yeah let's see oh uh, yeah so this is one of slick Rick's motor plates um, this right here is our angle of the tube I'm not going to uh, blow these holes out with the laser just because I would rather do the tubes, drill them, and then put the motor plate in, bolt it in here, and then drill through that so you use the tube as kind of an indexing thing. That way, you know, you get it absolutely perfect um, in the thing. You're not, you know, limited like, hey, you know, this is cut in the wrong spot. Um, so this, these, these plates are going to be symmetrical. I did some other ones that have slick rick engraved in them and you could cut them, but um, the size of the motor plate, I, I want to keep it uh, as strong as possible, so we're going to do that solid. So we got that. Um, let's see if we got any other slick rig stuff in here. We did some. What we do the flanges for the VPS mount. So you guys can Mac problem. My computer. It, my computer is not designed. My computer is designed to edit videos. Okay, and Matt's over here. This is. This is running a stock 5.3 on methanol with a 106, 50 pounds of boost, and it just chunked a rod. Yep. And that was it right there. Got a shock failure. So yep. This is, uh, we, just, right. we just oiled the track down. Yes. So, uh, you guys got a pretty good idea. Matt's been designing stuff like that. Uh, we're talking about possibly doing some stuff where we could sell some, th some things that we find useful. Yeah, if you guys um, got an idea for something, drop it in the, the comments. I'll, I'll, you know, whip it up and draw something. You know, we can laser cut it, um, plasma cut it water jet it um we're gonna do some carbon fiber stuff that's i guess we can talk about that so on slick rick where the ecu the holly the uh, pmu 16 uh, all that stuff mounts it's going to be in a carbon fiber tiered stack so you'll have your holly down there your injector drivers and above that you'll have the pmu 16 and it'll have carbon um, like cable trays in there so all the wiring will be routed up through there and it'll also be hinged so it'll all be stacked on top of each other and then if you want to access it you can just you know, we might do a pin design or something and then you pull that up. So all that um, carbon will be like three millimeter thick carbon that's uh, laser cut and it'll say slick rick on it. I mean, I want it to be 
I want it to be cool. I want, when you look at the car, I want it to be yeah, slick. So what Matt's saying is he loves to spend uh, spend some money. Thick carbon fiber, billet. Financial struggles. All well, right, so we got the uh, column in there, and I got all the joints, shafts cut and everything. Uh, this is the um, angle. It's a little bit different than you normally would run, but to clear the headers and what we got going on, this is about the only thing we can do. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any issues. We might run a brace over here, but this, this feels pretty rigid because it's also it goes through this uh, uniball at the firewall, so that's going to really stiffen it up. Um, everything's good. Just getting John in there to fit it. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna weld some bars off this uh, once we get the seat. Get the in there. seat because we're gonna lower it down. Right now we have some adjustment here, as you can see. So I think probably right there will be good. And this is where my feet will go. So when I lower the seat down just a little bit, I think it's gonna be money because uh, that'll help get my knees out of the way a little bit. So, um, yeah. but I mean, if I had to drive it like this. Uh, it'd be good. I'd rather have it shorter. They make five inch and six inch adapters. So if we move the seat down and it doesn't feel right, we'll just put the six inch adapter on there and it'd be good to go. Well, I can this, also move this wherever I need to move it. Yeah. So we can- What? How big is this one? You got a tape measure? Five Andy? inch. This is five inch? Okay, so they make five and six inch. So I, I, it feels good there to me, I, but you know, it's like if the seat moves down and things feel funny, I don't think it's gonna be like that. The wheel feels good. So the seating position in this car, it's like big motor, Big motor cow hood, right? It's got cow hood. Yeah, it's got yeah. cow hood. It's not a big, big cow hood, but I, it's short me rise. Personally, I don't like to run a cow hood. I like to just run like a like I do on the sheep, just a flat stock hood, and then just cut out. But this whole motor is going to sit, like the whole intake is going to be above the factory uh, yeah. hood line. So I think it feels good. Um, move the seat down. I think what maybe an inch, inch and a half. Kind of see how everything yeah, feels. Kind of put put you down there where you get the other seat in there, and then once once he likes it and get the column like, hey, our angle's good and our length's good, then like I said, we'll come in here and weld um, some braces off that to the column so they make it rigid. But you got to think, I mean, steering wheel here, shifter here, uh, and all your controls up here. Everything is like very very close within reach. Parachute handle probably can move this to like out here somewhere. Put so a, it's, put a pneumatic launcher on it. Yep, a pneumatic the, cylinder for the launcher. The air shifter or air launchers, air shifter, air steering wheel. So, yeah, everything looks good. Um, I, I feel good about this because, like, right now, once we once we say like, hey, um, it's good, then it'll just be a matter of drilling the apex joints and through the tube, putting some bolts in there, and the steering is done. So yeah, the um, steering column. I mean, there's no point, like Matt's saying, to go any further right now until you get everything else because it's kind of just like everything else in the car. You change one thing, three other things get affected by it. So I'd say this um, this looks pretty good. We are going with the race tech seat in here. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, we're gonna go with the race tech seat. Yeah, we need to call them tomorrow and get it going that way. Get some Especially uh, at these speeds. Yeah, it's got the head protection too, which I really like and you yeah, just feel way more secure in it. Yeah, so. you don't have to run the ISP padding. So it cost wise you can run a Kirky and ISP padding. The ISP padding's seven hundred dollars I think. So I mean you're almost like right in there with the race tech seat. Yeah, you're getting close to what a race tech seat is. And it's costs. comfortable. Like the thing is like you sit in a Kirky for a while in the lanes, like something happens, like they're not well, that comfortable. I never really had a problem with the Kirk. I don't really have a problem with the Kirk right now. My street car, I think it's a great seat for it. But when you're going really fast and you're pushing it, you know, it's like when you're driving, the last thing you want to be thinking about is like how safe you feel in the car or like how the seat feels. When I sat in that race tech seat, it was like, you're two, it was like two different levels. It's like, it's really, they're tough to compare because they're not even in the same playing field. The race tech seat feels like a race seat when you sit in it, you know, you feel like you can get strapped in there and like, you're not going anywhere you can you can pu it. you could push it and you feel like you're safe kirky seat you know you bolt you strap yourself to it it really is what it is you're just strapping yourself to a piece of aluminum so it doesn't have any head protection at least the ones that we run the ones that most of the people run they're all the same it's that 17 inch hip width kirky seat this one i think's got a little bit higher does it or yeah, they have like a 51 series and a 54 and some other ones and they have like a, the higher back so but compared to the race tech they really don't compare, so I'm excited to get that in here. As long as we can make it fit, um, they got nice brackets that come with it too, and then we'll get everything all figured out. We're gonna run the same wheel, uh, same button configuration, and then uh, plan to run the same same steering hub adapter. It's, it makes it a lot easier going car to car too, especially with as many cars as you got. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want two cars that have you know totally different feel to them. You want to yeah. try to make them all the same. So. Yeah, and honestly, after you drive them once or twice, you kind of get used to it. So it's like driving the bad apple. 
Um, the pedals are pretty far away from me there, so I'm used to like reaching for those. The black sheep is like, I mean, I've made the most passes in it, so it just feels really yeah, good. This pedal's probably gonna be like, yeah. So yeah, and I don't mind sitting there like this with my feet. Um, but we'll probably we're probably gonna move the seat. Do you want to come back? Yeah, car? we're gonna move the seat back like this much. That's what, that's what I was thinking. Move the seat back an inch and put that six inch um, adapter on there, and I think that well, might if be you a get ticket. a five inch, I mean, this is this this part can be just changed. None yep. of it's welded or anything, so it's just a matter of making it. So we'll go we'll go back. Let's plan to go back an inch and down one to two inches, yep. and then we'll we'll That'd reassess because you want your your right now you look like your legs are a little cramped. A little bit compared to what I'm used to. I, I, if I was right here, that'd be ideal. Yeah, right there. Yep. So I mean, really, we're talking about an inch. Yeah. Or so. So. Yeah, because your pedal's gonna be about right there. So you wanna. Yeah. Your, your brake pedal be. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. still growing, guys. In case you haven't noticed, I'm getting taller. While, while we're here, since we got a light now, you want to show them all that again? Oh yeah, go over all that. This that way, the, that way they can actually. This see is what we just flat. made. So before this, just went straight into that open hole there, and then Matt put the two apex joints. Um, here you talk about it. Wears, that was the original hole. Yeah, the wears um, flange mounts, a uniball that mounts on there, three quarter inch. Yeah, it goes through the firewall right here, so we'll drill holes on each side. Um, and like I said the two apex joints and then we might come off of the pedal mount right here with a, uh, a brace depending on if this wants to wobble it feels very rigid so I don't think we're gonna have any issues um, with the flexion or anything and then it comes out goes pretty much straight shot all the way to the uh, steering rack clears the new upright bar we put for the motor plate and, and it also pump. clears the oil pump and we left it so you can service the oil pump like we just talked about so all that's good. Now we're going to jump on. I'm going to do the transmission cross member and modify, do a plate to uh, mount the new uh, tandem master cylinder. So, and after that, I think we're out of parts for yep. Slick Rick. So we're going to jump on to the Glizzard. Got some stuff maybe we can do on the sheep. Yeah. Just keep chipping away. We've got, we're just knocking stuff off the list. So as far as steering column goes, like I said before, this is about as far as we're going to get until you get some other things yeah. locked into place. So, And I feel good. You know, it's one of those things like the column and the headers. You, you never know until you start doing it. Like, is it going to be a pain? Is it going to work? Is it going to clear? And it um, ended up working out pretty good. Um, we lucked up pretty good. We thought we were going to have to put a lot more joints in it. And yeah, I thought I was going to have to have multiple joints out there, um, but it, it went straight through there. It's got enough room for the EGT um, sensor to go in the, the header and everything. So I think we're, uh, we're in pretty good shape on the steering column. It'll just be a matter of doing some final adjustments on the length and the angle once the seat's in the correct location. Yep. So. And I'll say a lot of people, I don't think you guys understand the thought that goes behind all these changes. There's a lot of thinking, there's a lot of time spent uh, talking about it, um, thinking about it, looking at different parts and, and different options just to make sure that we get it right because it's like, I mean, it's really like playing chess. You know, you gotta be thinking many steps ahead, you know, like we're just putting a steering column in it but steering column is affected by the oil pump and, and yeah you want to make sure I, you got brake clearance and all this other stuff i think realistically we had about three hours total in it and people just don't realize like they think no, oh you, time. You, I mean, you, it, you throw a uh, steering column in there oh let's go yeah no some of them are easy some of them are straight like that um some of them aren't some of them are very difficult uh, so this one was a yep. little, little difficult not too bad the headers made it difficult the, the way the chassis is um that's one of the other things like when you start with somebody else's chassis that's already built a little bit different on how you would do it but it's it's one of those things you just got to start modifying it and doing it and don't be afraid on your stuff don't be afraid to change it because sometimes you end up trying to make something work that somebody already has in there and you spend more time trying to make that work than just redoing it yeah so but i feel good about it i don't think we um and we're going we got the drive shaft clean. i mean we, we're going to be rocking and rolling once we get the turbo on there we're going to nail up the hot side and uh do the cold side exhaust start mounting sensors wire it and, and then it's testing testing everyone's favorite thing to do so all right well that's gonna wrap today's video um when we check back in on the slick rick stuff we'll have the transmission mounted um and we'll have some other stuff rolling we'll probably have that list knocked out and a new one started so uh another day or two and you guys will get some more slick rick updates we're gonna keep working on it and get it knocked out so Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Uh, giveaway winner. I'm supposed to re receive the results tonight or tomorrow morning. So not the next video, but the following video after that because I'm starting to pile them up because we've been working a lot in the shop. So uh, two more videos from now, you guys will get the winner for the Boomhauer giveaway. So get excited. It's going to be a sweet car. Somebody's going to really enjoy that car. Someone's getting a muffin cap peeler for themselves.
He get to buy this round. John Doc got to buy this round. The black feet. Hold the property. He got to buy for the next round.